Hey, my name is Miguel and in this devlog I'm gonna show you the first iteration of the forging mechanic. In this devlog series I'm building an RPG with Godot engine and in the previous devlog I've shown the heat system which is required for the forging to work. The idea is that the player can interact with an anvil to forge, however it is currently quite confusing what the player can interact with and we need to change that. Also, there are situations where the player cannot really interact with something. For example, when the player is missing coal or minerals, then the player cannot really smelt. And currently it's not really visible why, and we need to make this visible. I started by creating an interaction controller that can be attached as a child to any node and that marks that node interactable. The cool thing about this interaction controller is that it emits a signal that you can connect to whenever the player interacts with something. I then created an interaction pop-up control that connects to the signals of the interaction controller. Whenever the player approaches the interaction controller collision, it will trigger that particular pop-up. While the pop-up is nice and useful, it wasn't really enough to make something interactable visible, so I decided to write a pixel-perfect outline shader that can be applied to any node. That shader also supports a so-called cut-off that allows me to cut off the bottom pixels. Not drawing the outline on the bottom of a sprite allows me to make it look more natural. I also added a fade-in effect by using a tween node for both the pop-up and the outline. Once the interaction system was finished, I integrated it into the existing smelting mechanic. The problem with the existing smelting feature is that you as the player have no control over what gets smelted. Well, the item that gets smelted is chosen at random from your inventory. This is not really intuitive and not really nice. We can solve this problem with our newly written interaction system. When approaching the furnace, ingots are not smelted automatically any longer. Instead, you need to select a stack of ore from your item bar. With enough coal in your inventory, it prompts you to press the action key to trigger the smelting. While testing the new changes, I noticed a very strange bug. You were able to pick up a piece of coal, carry it to the furnace and heat it up. However, it would appear as an ingot. From a technical perspective, this makes complete sense, because I really just pixeled the heating animation for ingots. I want to be able to heat up and reforge existing tools as well, so for those I also would need to create a custom heat texture. Creating all those heat textures for all those items sounds like a lot of work, and I was wondering, there must be a better way. And this is the exact type of problem that can be solved by a shader. This solution solution allows me to write a piece of code that gets executed for every pixel of a sprite. I first invert the color of the current pixel, then I desaturate it so it becomes gray, and then I look up another color from a LUT texture based on the gray value. The LUT texture itself I created in GIMP. That texture is basically a horizontal strip containing a gradient. I also added a brightness input to the shader that allows me to influence how bright or how hot that texture should be. Writing this system was a lot of fun and usually I'm not really good at writing shaders and this was one of the first shaders I've written all by myself. To be completely honest with you, I wasn't really sure how this will look in the final game and while implementing it I was not really sure I was doing the right thing but seeing it in the game once implemented really gave me the confidence that I can use this. One feature the heat system introduced was that you cannot pick up any item that is hot. While this is immersive and makes sense from a blacksmithing perspective, it is also quite annoying. Nobody wants to just stand there and watch their ingots cool down, just to be able to pick them up. I pixeled an oil bath with an S pride and implemented it into the game. Now the player is able to walk there and cool down any item they are carrying with a tongue. Thanks to the interaction system, the player now gets also a pop-up when they are able to actually cool something down. With all of that being out of the way, we can finally start building the forging. You cannot forge without an anvil. After creating an anvil sprite, I've imported it into Godot Engine. After adding a collision and the interaction controller, 
The player is able to walk close to the anvil and interact with it. You can only interact with the anvil while carrying a hot item. For example, while having a forging hammer equipped and carrying an iron ingot, you can strike it a couple of times to forge it into a tool. Currently, you will only be able to forge pickaxes. However, I want to introduce the concept of having different anvils to craft different types of armor and tools. The problem with this approach is that you need to actively hold the item with your tongue while forging. The reason why you need to keep a key pressed to hold an item with a tongue was for immersion purposes. However, I can see how this can get into the way of the player and I'm open for feedback how you think this should work. Another challenge I'm facing is that the player can walk away from the forging whenever they want to. So would all their progress be lost? To solve this, I introduced the concept concept of a so-called forge blank. When the player hits the ingot once with the hammer, it converts automatically into a forge blank type of the same material. For that, I create a new resource script called forge blank that extends the item resource. The reason why I'm creating a custom resource for this is it comes with a couple of additional attributes that are required and are critical for the forging process. Each forge blank defines the number of strikes it requires to forge an item. It also knows about the source material, for example an iron ingot, and also about the item that it results to, for example an iron pickaxe. Once I implemented the forging logic into the anvil node, I went to Sprite and created different stages for each forge blank. Having this visual feedback on the forge blank tells the player how far they already forged an item without relying on a UI component. I have mentioned a couple of times already that I want to make forging in this game skill based. Please keep in mind that the logic at the moment is a very early iteration and it will most likely change based on your feedback. When the forging hammer hits the heated up material, I'm calculating a forging score. Based on the forging score, I can then modify the properties of a tool. I also introduced item name prefixes. You will actually start out now with a rusty copper pickaxe. This means that its forging score is negative. Someone didn't take care of that tool in a very long time. However, with the forging system implemented, you can grab that tool, heat it up and forge it to increase its quality. Technically, the forging is now finished. However, it looks a bit weird. Okay, that's better. Let me show you how I did that. We are now in Sprite and this is the player project. As you can see, I created different animations. So when I scroll to the right, you see I have animations for idle, for running, for mining, for carrying and for forging. And the forging bit is the thing I've added recently. Then I added a couple of groups. So each item has its own group and you can see the groups are gray. So for example, Tong currently just consists of iron. Tong, I have pickaxe, which has the different types of pickaxes and also the hammer, which is currently the copper hammer that I've implemented into the game. When I then go to the forging tag and play it, you can see that I've layered both animations together. So I have here the iron tong, which I can disable, and I also have the copper hammer. The reason why I did that is the player can find and forge their own hammers in the game, so that particular animation needs to be replaceable. It also allows me to iterate over the animation more quickly because the player animation itself is in the same file as the tongue and the hammer. In order to time this perfectly, I have added a call method track inside the animation player within Godot. Also a huge shout out to Tom Smith who redid all the sound effects of my game. Simon also composed new music for the game, some of which you might have heard already in the background of this devlog. Both have joined me during Global Game Jam earlier this year, so check that video out if you haven't already. So what's next? Well, I'm working on a couple of quality of life improvements for the game, fixing bugs that were raised by the community and also preparing the big update on itch.io. Honestly, thank you so much for your support and make sure to like and subscribe and you can also join our Discord server, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.